welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to be covering creating a software entitlement in ServiceNow in the Software Asset Professional module. I'm going to cover two different ways of creating software entitlements, one with a part number and one without a part number. The easiest way to work with your entitlements is to navigate to the Software Asset menu, which I've done here by searching for Software Asset. And then in my menu, under the licensing section, there's two different ways that I can interact with my entitlements. If I want to see just a listing of all of my entitlements that have been input into the system, I can click on software entitlements. And from here, I can create a new entitlement. Now I happen to have a part number already copied, so I'm just going to paste it here in my publisher part number and select the part number that I want. And it will automatically fill in several of these fields for me. You'll notice that it filled in the software model for me. It also identifies the license type, which in this case is perpetual. And my metric group was set to Microsoft because this is a Microsoft product. So now I have my Microsoft license metrics that are available here to select. And you can see that this is a Microsoft Windows Server Enterprise Windows. So I don't specify an addition or uh, I do have a version here, the enterprise version, but not a particular year, for example. So if I put this in now, I'm just going to put in a per device, one of those just for this example, and go ahead and submit that. Now I've got a few different Windows Server licenses in the system here, and we'll sort by name. I've got my 2019 data center, I've got another 2019 data center, I have a Windows Server Enterprise that I was just created from that part number. And when I go to look at my software models now, I've noticed that if I filter here, on my Windows Server items, I have now three different models of Windows Server. And if I look in here, I should be all right because I've got Server Enterprise, which was just created, and then Server Data Center, which was here previously. So I should be able to use this part number and go forward with my reconciliation. However, sometimes the part number comes in in ways that we don't expect. For example, um, if I have Windows Server Enterprise Windows, who knows that the Windows is added here on the end. And this is because of the discovery map that we're using. The discovery map on our software model is a combination of version, edition, platform, language, those details about the particular product that make it into a model that distinguish it from other versions and additions. And you can have many of these or you can have just a few of these, but these maps are what determine our display name and it's how the reconciliation is performed. So uh, when I put in a part number, it actually generated this model for me. This model did not exist until I went into my software entitlements and created a new entitlement with that part number because I had never used this product in my environment before. I'd never discovered it. I'd never created a model or input an entitlement for it. And if this map is not exactly what I needed it to be, let's say, for example, the platform isn't coming in through my software installations, or I, uh, in my contract, that part number tells me that this is actually for Windows Server any version and any edition. It doesn't need to be enterprise. There's a couple ways that you could do that. One way is to come in here and, and change the discovery map and find a discovery map that more accurate, really accurately represents the version and the contract that you have with your vendor and with the, with the publisher. But that could also create duplicates. Let's say that I already have an existing model migrate away from here. And so upgrading my models uh, to a different map might end up creating duplicates for me. For example, here I've got server 2019 data center and server data center windows. And maybe one of these is not correct. These need to be combined into one measurement. Maybe my agreement says that I can have any year of server data center. And now the 2019, if I come in here and try to change my discovery map and might change my conditions, now I've got duplicate models. So the best way to avoid that situation is to actually come into the software model first. So if I had gone uh, a different way, my second option for creating software entitlements, instead of going to the software entitlements menu first and creating it from there, I can just navigate directly to the software models field. And in general, I can assume that these are the models that my organization is managing. Some of these might have been auto-generated by the system. 
uh, depending on the settings in the environment. And some of them may have been created unintentionally, but in general, it's a good place to start to identify the things that are being managed. And then if I'm not sure which specific version here, again, I'm gonna match my Windows Server. I've got three different ones. Maybe I'm not sure if this actually belongs in Data Center or, or 2019 Data Center. So another tip is to actually open these up and take a look at the entitlements. If there are entitlements against that model, it's likely that that's the one that's being used and will continue to be used. And you'll notice this one here, there's the software entitlements, there's nothing here, there's no values filled out, there's no dollar amount. So it's likely that this is not the model that's being used. So I'm gonna go back to my Windows Server 2019 data center as one example, and I'm gonna create my new software entitlement here from the related list. And this does a couple of things for me. One, it ensures that the entitlement that I'm creating is being counted against the specific model in my system that we're already using to measure our Windows Server 2019 data center. So that way I'm not unintentionally creating a new model or selecting the wrong model, because there may be additional things that have been set. For example, a software install condition. Maybe this has to do with counting only the production machines instead of counting my, uh, my standby or my development machines. So I wanna make sure that I'm using the model that, that makes sense for the license that I've selected. When I click new, it's important uh, that I do not change this publisher part number field now. Even though on initial insert, I can put in a publisher part number, and maybe I do have a publisher part number for this. Because I'm coming from this other direction and my software model is already filled in, putting in a part number now could change my software model to something else. And that action can create a duplicate model uh, unintentionally. It can select the wrong model. So if, if you're going through this process of creating it from the software model, that's generally intentional and, and don't put in a publisher part number uh, unless you wanted to start from that entitlements to begin with. And just to, to illustrate this, I'm gonna paste my part number here that I had from before. And um, you'll notice that this will change. There we go now to the server enterprise windows. So I can, I can change that from here and I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna back out and create this again. And then I can continue to fill out the information that I know, my per device, my purchase rights. You'll notice now that because I put this in from an existing software model, the unit cost is populated from my software model as a default. So on this record, after I save it, you'll see is, is this $120 cost as our baseline. So I'll go ahead and submit this. And there's that $120 that populated automatically on my software entitlements. So those are the two different ways that you can create your software entitlements. Just as a recap, navigating the software asset, the first method is to go to software entitlements and click new, and then input my part number or select the software model from the list. The other is to go to the software model to ensure that you're using the correct software model, open up that software model, and then using the related list at the bottom, create a new software entitlement and not use the publisher part number. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at GlideFast. We appreciate uh, being able to work and, and share this with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.